And we are following breaking news right now. One of the winningest coaches in NBA history, Jerry Sloan, has died at the age of 78. Mm. The Utah Jazz confirming the news this Friday, issuing a statement in part saying, quote, Jerry Sloan will always be synonymous with the Utah Jazz. He will forever be part of the Utah Jazz organization. And we join his family, friends, in mourning his loss. We are so thankful for what he accomplished here in Utah and the decades of dedication and loyalty and the tenacity he brought our franchise. Jerry Sloan coached the Utah Jazz for 23 seasons. He started off as a player for the Baltimore Bullets and Chicago Bulls before transitioning to coaching just a few years after that. He was the head coach for the Bulls for a short stint before becoming the longtime coach for the Utah Jazz. More than 1,200 wins with the Jazz 20 trips to the NBA playoffs and two NBA final appearances. You can see some of his coaching highlights there. Jerry Sloan was battling a number of health issues, including dementia. We're going to bring in somebody who knows him very well. That would be our Raja Bell, who played under Coach Sloan for multiple seasons here. He joins us now on the phone. Uh, Raja, I just kind of want to know, uh, as, as you soak this in, your reaction to this passing of Coach Sloan. Um, you know, just super sad. My, my prayers obviously go out to, to his family and, and Utah Jazz Nation. Um, Jerry was, you know, Jerry's one of my favorite coaches of all time. I played, I played for some great coaches up at West in that regard. Um, and, um, you know, I chose to play for Jerry twice. I, I went back to Utah the second time uh, because of how much respect I had for Jerry and how much I enjoyed, um, you, you know, the relationship with him. He was just a, uh, a man's man. And I, you know, I really appreciated the way he conducted his business in a league where you can get caught up in so many um, politics and and, wow. and and the like. You know, Jerry was just true to his word and judged, judged the player for, for who he was, not for where he came from um, or who he had represented him. And I really, I really, really appreciated that. For you as a player, what set him apart from other coaches that you played for? What made him so special? Well, you know, he came into my life at a time where, or into my career and life at a time where I, I wasn't given the opportunity on most of the teams I had played on to, to really score the ball um, and explore being kind of an all-around NBA player. I was just basically um, the fifth guy on people's, you know, starting lineup to just go out there and defend or maybe the sixth or seventh guy. And when I got to Jerry, it kind of coincided with Stock uh, retiring and, and Carl Malone going to L.A. So there was a you know, there was a relatively young team in place, and he allowed me um, to be a part of that team offensively. And so, you know, two years of doing that, you know, kind of allowed me to get, gain some firm footing in the NBA and kind of make a career out of it. So, you know, for what he did for my career overall, I'll be, you know, eternally grateful. And just, you know, as a as as the type of player that I became, um, you know, he was instrumental in that because he had this no take no prisoners attitude, give no layups uh, away, fight for everything um, and every inch on the court. And I really respected that. And I figured out um, with Jerry that if, if I could do that um, and just show him that I would fight and scrap and claw and that I had a heart, you know, he'd find minutes for me. And then there were times where, you know, I wasn't the option and he'd go in a different direction and he was man enough to let me come to him and talk to him about it and tell me whether I wanted to hear it or not, what it needed to be. Uh, but if I corrected it, I was right back where I needed to be. So, you know, I always appreciate it. In a league, again, where you can get caught up in a lot of politics, there were very, very little politics played with Jerry. You know, it is rare we see these coaches with one franchise for this long, 23 years with the Jazz. Talk about the impact that he's leaving for that team, that organization, and that state, Raja. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that you can really put that into words, um, you know, what he meant to Utah. I mean, you got a glimpse of, of um, you know, those championship medal type of teams in, in the last dance a, a couple nights ago. Um, you know, Utah's a basketball crazy town, and a lot of that has to do with Jerry Sloan and Carl Malone and John Stockton and those teams, you know, in the 90s that were just as good as anybody in the NBA. And, you know, I really do believe that, that Jerry is part of the DNA of, of what we still think of Utah Jazz teams to be, which are hard-nosed, tough teams, uh, won't give an inch, will scrap for anything um, they can get their hands on. And, and I think um, Jazz teams 
at least for the foreseeable future, will we'll play like that. And I believe Jerry's a big part of, uh, of that. And I think he laid the foundation, um, you know, with the Millers or blue-collar people out there to, to really have that be what the Utah Jazz kind of represent as a brand. All right, Raja Bell, thank you so much for joining us on the phone. I know it was short notice there. Uh, Raja Bell played multiple years under Jerry Sloan there. Taking a look at the coaches with 15-plus consecutive winning seasons. Of course, Jerry Sloan right there at the top of the list. The fourth winningest coach in NBA history has passed away at the age of 78. And for more on this... For more on this, let's now welcome in our Rip Hamilton, who joins us uh, via video conference. Uh, Rip, I guess I'll just start by getting your reaction uh, following the passing of Jerry Sloan at the age of 78. Well, it's definitely a tough day uh, in our NBA community. Uh, Jerry was uh, one of the greatest coaches of all time. Uh, similar to what Roger said, he was a guy that was tough-minded, played hard, uh, and his players embodied his, his style. Uh, of play, and it started uh, in his NBA career. He had a 10-year NBA career. He was a two-time All-Star, made the All-Defensive team four times, and it really, really showed in his coaching style, especially in Utah. I remember playing against them guys, and you just, you just knew that Raja Bell, Matt Harper, them guys was going to run the wing every time on miss and makes, and he expected that uh, from his ball club. So his team really embodied uh, his personality. He coached two great players, uh, in my opinion, John Stockton and Carl Malone, top 25 guys in, in NBA history. But uh, when you think of Utah basketball, you can't think of Utah basketball without thinking of Jerry Salone. So my condolence goes out to his wife, Tiffany, and the whole uh, Utah Jazz organization. Rip, I wanted to ask you, you uh, mentioned about his playing style and coming up against his teams and how difficult that was, kind of knowing what to expect. How did Jerry Sloan change the culture of the Utah Jazz? Oh, he definitely changed the culture because, you know, when the Los Angeles Lakers during the 80s and, and, and 90s, you know, was playing more of a high pace, uh, very, I always say, sexy uh, game, Utah was going to be hard-nosed. They were going to uh, muck the game up. They were going to play toughness. They were going to be very tough. John Stockton was one of the greatest point guards of all time, but when you talk to guys like Gary Payton, uh, Michael Jordan, and they also say you know, uh, John Stockton was probably one of the dirtiest players because how tough he played and he wouldn't just give give uh, the edge to uh, guys that would come in and play uh, against that Utah team. So you know, you just look at the way that he coached his ball club. Roger Bell just spoke about it himself. Like Roger was a very tough-minded individual. When he came in there, you know he was going to compete against him. You know he was going to give his all on the defensive end, and he was going to make you fight for every possession on the offensive end. His guys didn't take plays off. When you look at a lot of NBA teams, you know, certain times guys would ease themselves into the game and not really come to play until the third or fourth quarter. In their mind, that's when the game was really uh, uh, meant the most. But he was going to have his guys uh, being ready and prepared when that ball first was thrown up at the beginning of the game. Rip Hamilton joining us here on HQ following the passing of Jerry Sloan at the age of 78 years old. Uh, Rip, I guess one last question I'll ask you about. In terms of Jerry's impact on the game itself, how would you rate and assess his impact overall on the game of basketball? Well, I, well, I think when, when, when you say that, it's hard to put it in words. But when you think of Utah basketball, you can't look at Utah uh, basketball without mentioning uh, Jerry Salone. Uh, that's that's how big his impact is. It's very similar to Chuck Daly uh, in Detroit. You can't mention the Pistons without mentioning Chuck Daly's name. So his impact, the culture that he has brought uh, to that Utah Jazz organization and the fans, they expect uh, their teams to go out and play hard. They expect uh, their, their, their team to come out with that bulldog mentality, and that's all because of Jerry Sloan. All right, thank you very much, our Rip Hamilton, joining us to discuss the passing of Jerry Sloan at the age of 78. Thanks, Rip. Yes. Mentioned Jerry passing away uh, this morning at the age of 78. He has battled a number of health issues over the last number of years. The Jazz issuing a statement saying that Jerry Sloan will always be synonymous with the Utah Jazz and will forever be a part of the Jazz organization.
Let's bring in somebody who is very familiar with Coach Sloan and his career, Coach Avery Johnson, joining us now uh, to talk about this. As I mentioned, Avery, you know him well. Uh, just talk about his impact on the game of basketball and what he meant to you. Yeah, Coach Sloan, um, I'm going to be sorely missed. Um, just send condolences to his family. Um, I just tweeted something out on and said that, uh, you know, great, great coach. And that's what he was. Uh, a lot of times when a coach is only recognized for his superiority when he wins the championship and got to the NBA Finals twice, I had a chance to coach against um, a number of his teams when I was coaching the Mavericks. And... Um, the New Jersey slash Brooklyn Nets. I had a chance to play against these teams uh, for a number of years when I played for the Spurs. But just an unbelievable leader, a really solid game manager. His teams were always tough and disciplined and hard nosed. Um, but this is definitely a big loss for the, not only the NBA, but for the game of basketball. Avery, before we get into what it was like to go against him, uh, either as a player or a fellow coach, I want to know, you know, you made the transition as well from player to coach, much like Jerry Sloan did uh, when he was younger. When you're entering as a coach, do you look up to those guys like Coach Sloan? What do you take from them? What do you try to learn from them when you yourself are becoming a young coach? Yeah, you definitely look up to him. And we were in similar situations because he was with the original Bulls and he only averaged about seven and a half points a game. I think I only averaged eight. And so it wasn't that we were uh, guys that were perennial all stars that went into coaching, but we were, he was the type of guy that I looked up to be a great leader, uh, uh, an overachiever, guy that really was an outstanding. You've heard this from Bob Love, one of his former teammates, just talk about what an unbelievable teammate he was. And I, I think a lot of the things that he took from playing in the NBA and playing, you know, for a lot of for different coaches, that you can take a lot of that and form your own type of culture and system and style. And believe me, in Utah, they had a, 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 a rocking system that uh, worked really well for their personnel. And, and boy, they, they didn't have an identity crisis. They knew exactly what they were doing. And he was the leader of it. Avery, I want to ask you, we heard from Raja what it was like to play under Coach Sloan. So you as somebody on the other side, either going up against one of his teams as a player, or you mentioned when you were coaching the Mavericks, what it was like to go against him as a fellow coach. What was that like? Well, some teams, you play against certain teams, and you're not very, you're not very well managed. Uh, maybe the talent pool is is not as high or not as experienced. But when you're going to play against the Utah Jazz, and specifically in Utah, you better get your rest. <laughs> you better get your rest. You better eat right. And more than anything, you better get your mind right. Because you're not only going to be entering into a physical uh, a battle against that team, these teams, but a mental battle. And, and you better understand the game of basketball more than from a physical athletic standpoint. You better understand it from an IQ uh, and, and, and in terms of being educated and knowing how to work through situations and the craftiness of John Stockton and Carl Malone. Uh, so it was just more than just a physical game against them. It, it, was, it was mental warfare, for lack of a better word. Avery, we've heard so much of, of what he was like as a player, as a coach, as a competitor. Uh, anything you can shed light on, on what he was like off the court, perhaps his personality there? Well, based on what I've heard, he's just a good old country boy. <laughs> <laughs> he was a guy, you know, when the season was over, you know, he went back to his home and, you know, he'd jump on a tractor and work out on, on a ranch or a farm or wherever he lived, but yeah, I just think he was just a good old down-home country boy. He wasn't about the flash. Uh, he wasn't a guy, you know, sitting around talking about his fancy speech. And, and uh, you know, he just loved the game of basketball. He, he was just basically a, a, a basketball junkie, a coaching savant, and a guy that just uh, was a basketball lifer. 
And that's what he was. He wasn't looking to join any other businesses or rebrand himself. He was all about the game of basketball. You can combine the two, a country boy and a Hall of Fame coach for 23 years. Avery Johnson, we appreciate you so much for joining us here on the phone to talk about the passing of Coach Jerry Sloan at the age of 78. And the Chicago Bulls have also issued a statement. Of course, we mentioned that Sloan, one of the original Bulls, a certainly a fantastic player with that Bulls team. Jerry Sloan was the original Bull whose tenacious defense and nightly hustle on the court represented the franchise and epitomized the city of Chicago. Jerry was the face of the Bulls organization from its inception through the mid-1970s and very appropriately his uniform number four was the first jersey retired by the team. Statement goes on to say a great player and a Hall of Fame NBA coach. Most importantly, Jerry was a great person. Our sympathies go out to the Sloan family and his many fans. Jerry Sloan passing at the age of 78 Friday morning. We'll be back.